my office bearers, uh, Ajay Singh, Hinesh Bhai, Haresh Bhai, Chairman of the session, uh, Mr. Vikram Bhai, and advisor to the Finale Tax Committee, Mr. Riyan Krishna, Mahindra Sanghvi, past president, cleaners, and friends. Very good morning to all of you. The voice is sounding dull. Today we have with us Mr. Nilesh Vikramsi, the president of ICAR. Nilesh Bhai is a very good friend of mine, as well as he is a member of our chamber. And he was the vice chairman of the, our corporate committee in the past. We all know that he has been elected as a past president. Uh, he has been elected, sorry, as a president of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India. And it is our privilege to felicitate him on the occasion. I extend a warm welcome to Nilesh Bhai and also thank you. Also thankful to him for readily accepting our invitations for this function. I congratulate him for his the honor which he has received, and I wish him best luck in this uh, in this uh, one year long journey. Nilesh Bhai, I would like to inform you that this year the chamber is celebrating the 90th year, and uh, very uh, many new initiatives chamber has taken. Of course, in my inaugural speech, I have addressed some of the initiatives. So the, it may be some reputations, but it would be worth uh, uh, informing the, uh, the members also. Uh, this year, the chamber has done the maximum number of representations before the regulatory authorities. Secondly, the chamber is constructing, uh, reconstru uh, reconstructing a school at Uttarakhand. This is the second such school which is constructing. This year is the uh, digital transformation for the chamber, where we have done the launching of our e-journal on the mobiles. The committee core group directories, webinars, series of webinars, live webcast, Facebook live, and so on. Various features we have introduced. We have conducted various programs for the students, such as Moot Court, then the article training, uh, the, module, uh, the module for the uh, training course for the C article trainees, then the essay competitions, and uh, uh, we held the various mega programs also where the membership, like the participants ranges from 300 to 700 people. This was the round the clock feature which we have done. We are coming out with a series of the publications this, uh, within two months, and many new features are going to unfold within the two months. So this year, the entire was very hectic, and the round the clock, the chamber is working with a very good support of my office there. Friends, the chamber believes in delivering the quality content, and that is why we see the lot of people uh, 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 even though there is no CP, but still the people are uh, subscribing to the, the program the, of the Chamber of Tax and uh, Services. <coughs> I wish all uh, once again the best of luck to you, and I ensure you that the Chamber will always be there whenever any support is required, and we will work at the shoulder to shoulder level uh, to achieve the uh, best of the results. <coughs> I am sure that this will be a very uh, eventful year for you and you will be coming out with the latest new initiatives and new innovative ideas which will benefit the members most and which will rise the, raise the bar of the uh, institute also. And, uh, uh, only one small request is that we do a lot of joint programs with the WRC. Many times it happens like uh, the program could not uh, be, uh, we could not go ahead with the program only because of the small number of CPOs. So if you can see uh, the CPOs in the joint programs can be considered, this will be more useful to the members for dissemination of the knowledge. And so with this small uh, thing, I wish him once again best luck and my congratulatory on behalf of all the members of the and the participants here. Thank you very much. <laughs> I request uh, our honorary secretary Hinesh Boshi to introduce the uh, uh, president, Mr. Hinesh Pickles. Then I'll just take uh, one minute. <coughs> I know Nilesh for the last almost 32 years. Uh, 
I have done articles under their form and uh, I was reporting to him. So it's been 30 years, 30 years of journey. So I can't speak bad about him. <laughs> Friends, uh, Nilesh come from the blue blood family of Bikamsi and Shivji Kuvarji and Kamni. Uh, his father, Shivji Bhai, who is a fatherly figure to the profession. His elder brother, Kamlesh Bikamsi, was also a past president and an icon of the profession. And similar uh, blue blood is also carried in Nilesh. Uh, you can see the way he uh, conducts or behaves himself in public or in private life. We will always try to uh, epic him and try to emulate him at all points of time. Uh, friends, uh, just a very small formal uh, background. <coughs> His form is in practice since 1936, uh, almost 79 years of experience in areas of uh, auditing and certain uh, regulatory services. He is iconic as a non resident of Mumbai after he has become president. I spoke with his wife last night. Do you are you going to recognize his face? Because he hardly comes maybe two or three times a week in Mumbai. Most of the time he is in Delhi. Uh, friend is also chairman of Federal Bank. Several uh, public listed companies he is associated as a director. I would not name it because the list is very long. Most important, he spends time in spiritual and cultural world. I would tell you, even today spends at least 10 days, uh, minimum two times 10 days, he does the Vipassana course and uh, is completely disconnected from the world and even, even at this time he is able to spend so much time on the spiritual activity. He is a trustee of Vipassana Academy and spends a lot of time for development of Vipassana. When I present to you, Mr. Vikramji, Uh, our uh, Vice President, Dr. Flora Duque. Okay. I request our President Nitesha to give a small appreciation moment. Coming to the introduction, just to uh, sort of 
Dinesh also got a slightly earlier profile. I stepped aside as the chairman of Federal Bank just because of the presidential choice. I continue as a director so that I can focus more on the ICA. And you know how the role is. It's a hot seat. You need to be there 24 by 7. So assuming I had committed for chamber today, but some emergency coming, I have to fly back there. So this is the role it is. So I have stepped, I continue as a director, I stepped aside. And because now also last year and this year there has been a miss because of these responsibilities. But yeah, the moment I finish this term, the first thing of the to-do list is to go back for attending meditation camp. And I would sort of request all of you to experience it, those who are not experienced it, uh, this 10 day Vipassana course. It's a life changing uh, game and it helps us deal with various ups and downs of life. I mean, ups and downs are part of life and how to navigate through that. I think it, it is uh, one of the best things which uh, you know, come across. Coming to the CPO the joint programs, this has been a long pending issue. Uh, as the, typically the Indian mindset goes, the government goes, it doesn't happen because of the wrong doers, rather the right doers. So there's a chamber, the Bombay Khan Society, the pressure is on. Just for information, for the first time, some relaxation has happened this year by the CP committee. I used to do one program with the chambers of commerce. Earlier that was also not without CP. So whether it's a, you know, SOCAN or CIF, so now I think gradually we are inching. It's bit by bit, it's a democracy. We keep on pushing. But it is a sort of uh, keeps on uh, the wrongdoers, maybe in North and in Central Asia, who would misuse this particular arrangement. In the moment we have any you know, program, say for Chamber of Life or BCA or whatever, there is no, you know, all of us know what uh, these organizations are. But this, the thing, the moment we open up and see this is past the background, we have to keep on working on it. The democracy 32 related members. The committees and also we'll take it back uh, to them to see what this is possible. Coming to GST, of course, uh, we've got experts, uh, I'm not a technical expert on GST. I just want to draw the attention of our members here on the softer aspect of GST. Of course, all of us know it's going to increase our GDP. The US Fed Reserve, about a week or 10 days back, came out with an analysis that is going to increase the tax collection by 6 lakh crores. It's almost 2% or the GDP will increase and uh, one year government borrowings uh, is the quantum of 6 lakh crore. Some other estimate which was given is the corruption in the indirect taxes, whether it is excise, service tax, VAT, all put together is roughly about 3 and a half lakh crores per annum. Of course, this is not a, this is just an estimate and you can understand if somebody is paying 3 and a half lakh crores, what will be the Total amount of tax that business will not be same. Presuming it is 25%, the figure could be 14 lakh crores. So it could be anything between 6 lakhs and 14 lakh crores, the tax which will be, you know, and you can understand the impact on the economy, the borrowings, the development which is possible. There are various issues which uh, are going to come up in uh, GST, the technical again, I am not speaking. The maximum people whom we represent here in this audience, all of us, is the small and the medium, also entrepreneurs, service providers and traders. In my view, the biggest challenge will be faced by them. Today, more, many of these people are you know, using the service of part-time accountants for their bad returns. Whenever the returns are to be filed, you know, the accounting is done either on a monthly basis or quarterly basis, as the case may be. There is no day to day accounting. And one comes GST, you will have to have people you know, up and running throughout uploading of the invoices, matching of the invoices, so on and so forth. And if that's not going to happen, what is going to happen to the, these people? If they are not going to organize themselves properly in seeing how they are handling GST within their own organization, what is going to happen to them? They are going to be out of business. The reason is, if whatever they are supplying, if they are not uploading the invoices and the opposite party, the larger company or the consumer is not going to get the credit, they are going to stop business with this party. At this point, we escalated to the government about 9-10 months back. There is going to be hardship to the small and medium entrepreneurs, traders, service providers, manufacturers. The feedback was, we want discipline in the financial discipline in the country. A very clear clarity of thought. They are not concerned with the amount of pain which is gone through for the last 67 years we have been used to a particular system of functioning 
and suddenly we are changing. The large companies will manage themselves. They have got enough resources to, you know, uh, overcome the initial breathing problem. So I think the message, it will be a huge opportunity for all the accountants. When I say accountants, not necessarily chartered accountants, right from the BCOMs, the cost accountants, the intermediate class, it will be a plethora of opportunities uh, which will be available. But the businessmen will have to understand that they will have to get their act together. If they are going to continue with the functioning, what is happening still on the premium was on the wrong way of doing things. Person, if I was a businessman, I would say why should I be paying excise duty, sales tax, VAT, excise service tax, customs, if my competitor is not in, always the competitor used to be the person who is not you know, sort of doing the way the right things. And there is more tendency premium to do the way the wrong things. So now, the whole pendulum is swinging to the other side, the premium will be on to those who are going to do the things the right way. People are going to pay their taxes in time, going to be organized, efficient, their business are going to grow multifold. And those who are not going to be ready, they will have to do their own. Despite the issues on employment, etc., I think the government is very clear. One other matter we escalated again nine, ten months back was on assuming I have paid the tax to the supplier and he is not paying to the government. It is going to be debited back to me after two months along with interest. If this is again a hardship, I have paid the taxes, why should it be debited back to me? The feedback we got is stop business with those people. Very clear, the clarity of thought is, see one, one may argue on the rightness or the wrongness of the decision taken, but the clarity is humongous at the government level what they want to achieve for the whole thing. So we may keep on Cribbing, complaining, there is going to be hardship to the small people and all, but this is where they want to, you know, this is the direction where they want to go. So, this is just a aside from our interaction as ICI when we go with the suggestions to the government. And I am very happy to inform you in the first draft, we gave almost about 200 suggestions. At that point of time, roughly about 50 suggestions were accepted fully or partly. In the second draft, about 170 odd suggestions were given, and I am told. The finally compiling the tally, about 100 suggestions have been accepted partially fully. Again, when we say partially, what is suiting the government they are uh, taking up. I'll just grab this opportunity on this couple of things which are plaguing the profession at large. I think all of us are connected, either as accountants or as lawyers. One of the key things which is challenging the whole profession, whether it's in accounting or the lawyer, uh, law profession, is the issue of perception. And I'm saying whether it's the government. What is happening is, uh, the general perception is we are providing wrong advice. And I think that needs to be, you know, tax planning is okay, but tax avoidance. So when we are, you know, we are embarking on a new law, GST. So again, my earliest request to all the members here would be, please don't, don't tread on the giving advice, which is maybe say illegal or maybe. So planning again I'm saying is okay, but avoidance or where we, people can do, do the shortcuts. Let's not go do that. The reason is, a few people who are giving wrong advice are tarnishing your profession across the board. This happened with demonetization. Before that, we did a wonderful job with the government on the income declaration scheme, which they appreciated the efforts of ICA and the profession on the income declaration scheme. We try to bridge the perception gap, and suddenly come demonetization. After a few days, we had a sting operation. A couple of chartered accountants caught, you know, advising on the wrong side. That, that image is influencing the government. Unfortunately, that is true for the profession. If you look at demonetization, after those few events, if you have seen, in most of the other you know, issues, it was only the bankers who were there, subsequently, if you see subsequent media reports. No CA, no other uh, intermediary was there. But the bankers as a whole profession have not been castigated. If you look at the impression in the government, but we are like, looking at chartered accounts the tax advisors, it's the overall impression that we generally give the wrong. So we need to correct, and this cannot only come from Chamber of Tax Consultant or ICAI or BCA. Unless individually we are going to buckle up and change ourselves, collectively uh, we will not be able to do anything. So it is as good as the weakest chain in the link. The weakest person in our chain is impacting your profession. I would plead upon you, request upon you, whatever temptation you are having, at least you are embarking on new law. I would say 90, 95% we give good advice, we do the right things. But even that 5% interest, if somebody is doing something wrong and that comparison happens, we, today we don't have the luxury of giving even a 5% wrong advice. That's the level which has reached. We are grappling with the government on these matters uh, on a day in and day out basis. In fact, uh, just for information, uh, on uh, 
26th on this demoralization cases out of the various cases which we had picked up on so motor basis based on the media reports. We had urine in five cases with full information available. In four cases, we have held the members guilty. Names not important. And one matter, we will get complete shorting because some information from the income tax and police was remaining. And three, four other matters were falling off information from the income tax. This is this happened in November somewhere, mid or end November. You look at it, we flat five months. In fact, that itself is a record for a dismissal proceeding in the institute. But this is the sense of urgency we are working. Again, the challenge is we want to bridge the perception gap that the you know institute is doing all this proceeding on a slow basis, trying to help you harm. If somebody is wrong, they'll be punished. If somebody is not wrong, they will not be punished. It will be based on evidences, uh, etc. But the issue is we cannot be complacent now. So the issue is becoming proactive as far as the public interest cases are concerned. So we don't have any you know, room now for any wrong uh, Other than this, of course, uh, the other major challenge in which all of us we need to be cognizant of is the challenge of technology. The way technology is taking over the various facets of life. In fact, I was in uh, New York on the first week of March attending IFAC meeting and one day before, the CEOs of various issues were taken by IBM. There they were told that there is a machine called Watson or a software or a hardware or whatever maybe. It can do medical surgeries. It can do 95% of the legal work. Accounting comes after that. I think in the pecking order, if a machine can do surgery you know, with water uh, precision and acumen. We have seen it with our own eyes. We used to do accounts on, you know, with our own hands, manual accounts, suddenly taken over by technology. We got a tally, Oracle, SAP. Time is not far away when whatever currently we are doing, compliance with accounting standards, auditing standards, compliance with income tax laws, compliance with indirect tax laws. I would say the majority part, we like to select it. GS is a my gut feeling after two years, it will be two years of teaching travel and advisory work. After that, it will be mundane, routine compliance work. And that also understand if the invoice matching is going to be happening automatically, where will the question of certification have all come? So the way things are changing, and I can only narrate the incidents of these telephones. You know, we, if you remember, we, the seniors will remember, we used to pay premium for getting a telephone connection to our house. And suddenly that has gone away with all the same thing for hiring, a, for taking a Fiat car or ambassador or a Bajaj scooter, it should be premium. Same thing is going to impact all of us, the technology is going to uh, hit us, we need to be aware. Of course, you ask me what is the solution, even I don't know. Only thing I am aware of the problem. The moment, I think the first step to finding a solution is being aware of the problem. So we need to be aware, then proceed on how do we harness it rather than getting impacted by the change. So that change is, whether and when it will hit us will not come to us. I think we need to be aware of what is happening. Uh, just some good news, Companies Act, if you remember, I have spoken a couple of times in the chamber also. Uh, there is an amendment bill which is pending in the parliament, the 87 sections are going to be amended. After a spate of uh, suggestions which have been made, 2009 the bill came, 2010 onwards ICA has been representing, and that time we were the only range, uh, only lone voice of opposition for the company's bill at that point of time. We were taken as the bad guys because calling a spade a spade. 2013 the act came. 14, many of the sections were not notified. And May 14, this new government has come. After that also we have been persistent and patient in uh, the follow-up. In fact, I would want to acknowledge the help of our honorable member of parliament, Girit Somaya from Bombay, Dinesh, Nitin Shingala, the past president of all of us. You know, uh, Girit by himself is a crusader of uh, investors. So a lot of issues, uh, acceptance of deposits, etc., etc., the ICDs and all. So we went and explained in a few hours, sat with him, you know, what are the challenges, how it is going to be anti-business, anti-profession. Uh, then he also piloted to help in meeting with the uh, secretaries and overall this government, the government is listening. That, that is a major difference from the earlier governments. And today I am very happy to inform you that this 87 section which are being amended, I think 90-95% of the pain area of the company that is good. And if at all any organization I think which has to be complimented for that, I think it has to be ICA. Other, of course, quickly, IFRS is been mandatory. First April 16 for all large companies more than 500 crore net worth. First April 17 for all companies with more than 250 crore net worth and all listed companies. And first April 18 will be NBFCs, banks, and all. Again, this is going to open up a huge opportunity for our younger members. 
Uh, IFRS is available in 150 countries, it's applicable in 150 countries. So over, uh, in fact, there are standards like IFRS 9, financial instruments, there are standards like uh, uh, revenue recognition, which is IFRS 15. That, these standards itself are an area of practice. Those who address the way GST is an area of practice. Uh, in fact, currently in US, I was in uh, San Francisco during my this trip, I opened up the uh, IC chapter there. I was told, till December of uh, this year end, there is an area of only in what they call rev rock, uh, revenue recognition. This IFRS 15, which is the US gap is equivalent, and all the software companies have to change the accounting in the world. So, we will have to be now more nimble, flexible. We have a lot of opportunities, but it will be maybe a momentary opportunity. For example, GSC in will be 2 3 years on the advisory side. Maybe a little bit will continue. After that, it will be compliance oriented. Like that, I think every we will have to be keeping on changing and grabbing these opportunities that come. Insolvency is a new law which has come last year. I would recommend those who are interested, again, a huge area of practice. World over liquidation and all is a huge area of practice. So, can we look at RERA? Again, another opportunity. We are changing our post curriculum. We are expecting the approvals any moment now. Once we get the approvals, we are going to launch this new post from 1st April of, uh, 1st July of 2017. Uh, there is a CA day. Only the entrance we are making, it was told CA is easy to enter, difficult to exit. We are making the entrance slightly tougher. I am not going to detail. We are getting into government accounting. With railways, we are changing railways accounting from cash to approval. We did uh, successfully complete the pilot studies under the Accounting Research Foundation. And currently, we have got a mandate to roll out cash to flow all across the railways, 17 zones and 4 manufacturing units. It will take about one and a half years. But once this is done, again, it will open up a huge opportunity in the whole government economy. And just, and again, for all accountants, I am not saying only CSM, the BCOMs, cost accountants, the whole accounting fraternity, the moment government shifts from cash to flow, it will open up a window of opportunity for all of us. And we are you know, pushing hard at least to. Our job is to complete this successfully. The moment we complete, automatically there will be a ripple effect in the other areas. Internationally, we are helping smaller countries set up their accounting professions. Bhutan, we have done uh, last year. Afghanistan, we are already on the job right now. We are uh, moving with them. We have offered our services for Africa. Africa again is a huge uh, continent. The accountancy profession is very decent. They are undeveloped. We are trying to help them if we get the opportunity. And for the members also, there is huge opportunity in Africa, those who are interested there. We are working with the uh, International Accounting Standards Board, Auditing Standards Board, Ethical Standards Board. Generally, we have to you know, keep on receiving those standards and implement it without much discussion. So now we are making our presence felt there. The Indian point of view, the Asian point of view, we are escalating there so that whatever standards come, you know, it is uh, relevant for the India and the, and the Asia. I can go on and on, but I would want to conclude now and holding you back with two, uh, one request and one final message is uh, those of your chartered accountants here, we are going to see a benevolent fund which will help the families of the needy members. You know, they are, uh, somebody is, say, died at a young age, or even if it is died at the right age, but doesn't have enough financial resources. We have 265,000 members, not all are like, you know, people sitting in this audience uh, well off. So, the contribution which you give will help them. Last year, we are supporting those families by giving 5,500 rupees a month. Currently, this year, we increased it to 7,500. But I don't know how long this will continue because interest rates are declining. Whatever corpus is there, so how much will be able to support them? So if you can contribute, I can just normally don't share my personal experiences. But when I turned 50, two and a half years back, I didn't celebrate. I sort of gave contribution to right from the school to the colleges and to the CABF and Vipers and all the trust that I'm associated with uh, instead of celebration. So I don't say you don't celebrate, please celebrate. But come on. One portion for the CABF as many you know, uh, do the celebrations or even otherwise. Uh, so your contribution, I think you can route it through chamber or whatever. Uh, it has to be, of course it has to be from members only right now. The, there's an agenda in the council whether we can accept donations from non-members. Uh, once the council passes the agenda, then we'll be able to accept from non members As of now, it is only from started one members we can take the you know, contribution. Uh, with this, I would also conclude taking a lot of your time. The dream is, of course, what IT made to our country, the IT hub of the world. We can do India as the accounting, tax, finance, and finance hub of the world. That's the way the council is working, that we can make India as the accounting hub of the world. Thank you.
Sir, we are privileged and honored to have you at this program with us. We are also grateful for accepting our invitation at the very short notice and coming and addressing this crowd. Sir, your action, what you have taken against the professionals who have indulged in the corrupt practice, and the advice what you have given to the young professionals, if you can see, quite a good number of young professionals have attended, will go a long way because the nation today is bleeding against corruption. And your action shows only that the person which we have at the helm of affairs is not merely a stand, but he is really acting to help in building the nation. Sir, your advice on GST and other laws were great. With this, I request all of you to carry a loud applause to the Thank you. We have just a change of dais. I will request the moderator and the brain trustee to please come on the dais. Thank you. Please be seated.